The North Milan urbanized region is a dense built nebula at the base of which interact, intricate and complex constitute dynamics. Its formation goes well beyond the exponential urban growth followed a long phase of economic prosperity. In the same way, its deterioration and increasing abandonment is not just the outcome of deep economical and industrial crises. More crucially, it is the evidence of a spatial and social relationships model breaking and of which the economic recession exacerbated the many contradictions and deep conflicts animating it. If indeed this urban territory has always been composed of fragmented identities, singularities and autonomies, it is equally true that such elements have gradually shifted to a very extreme individualized framework. This pulverized the historical interdependence between the many elements that connoted the area for long. This paper analyzes and reinterprets the Milan's metropolitan contemporary urbanized territory in the light of the conflict between its actual physicality and the end of main settlement patterns. The aim is to, therefore, investigate new declinations of welfare intended as new forms of public well-being in the construction of the urban territories. It will be proposed the concept of maintenance as a strategy to address the deep metamorphosis to which Milan's metropolitan area is subjected, and where this term is closely related to the process of continuous, incremental and long-term transformations of the urbanized territory and open lands. The focus will be on Brianza urban system, a section of Milan's metropolitan area located in the north, between the Milan city, the lakes and the pre -ops. It is a low-density but deeply urbanized area, which includes major factory concentrations. The Milan's northern metropolitan region is under enormous pressure due to the fragmented yet massive processes of urbanization. Surprisingly, these processes run parallel to an opposite process of gradual abandonment and underutilization of land, buildings and spaces, even if newly built. This area has been for long a fertile cradle of industry from the Industrial Revolution through the phase of post for this production reorientation on 1970s, especially focused on design furnishing and high-tech components production. The area is thick with infrastructure and includes three river valley systems along which agriculture was originally developed in order to supply textile industries uh, that had been in the area since the beginning of the industrial development. Uh, the agriculture today is reduced to cropped fragments among the low density urban sprawl. The contemporary organization of the extended Milan's metropolitan territory, and of which Brianza is the area that more than others condenses its main futures, originates from a network of ancient towns and following developments, with Milan as its most intense point of concentration. Industries of all scales have been widely dispersed across the urbanized region, all linked to a trans-European infrastructure since the late 19th century. The Brianza was from the beginning one of the most dynamic and richest industrial areas of Italy, in the first phase especially focused on mechanical and textile production. The urban evolution of the area have seen agriculture, industry, infrastructure and a myriad of towns giving rise to an extremely resistant and flexible framework, which in the past has withstood profound political and social changes, but without either actually altering the fundamental settlement characteristics for very long. The pattern of dense relationships between heterogeneous environments has always been deeply resilient. But since the end of 1960s, every urban element in this area has been individually conceived, piece by piece, contributing to the formation of a fragmentary urban landscape of autonomous objects. This has been particularly evident not only in the multitude of superstores, business parks and single homes sited in the metropolitan area, but also more significantly in the spread of industrial activities that are independent from the infrastructural nodes and the motorways network.
In fact, the size family style managing a perfect integration into low density environments has made possible for them a high spatial degree of autonomy. This growing parceling of land and functions has come to dismantle a system of relations that, at various scale, had previously constituted a textural datum within which new and disruptive urban dynamics have been elastically absorbed for centuries. Despite this, the economic and social microcosm scattered in infinite individualities had been at the base of industrial prosperity until the last economic crisis. The governance of Milan's metropolitan dimension was then split into a multitude of directions, leaving a free field to any local initiatives and urban approach, and restricting possibilities for unified, coordinated and pervasive plans for Milan's metropolitan area, with the last word mostly left to local municipalities, where not to real estate developers. They then have followed individual goals. A tolerance of incremental expansion that created a scattered, go it alone spatial culture and in which the previous frameworks have begun to crumble. The actual Brianza is an area of about 880 square kilometers, a population of more than 1 million people, a density of 1,400 inhabitants per square kilometer. This huge density highlights the level of soil consumption, especially if we consider that the European average is about 113. The total number of active firms, and which constitute the largest economy in the area, is about 63,000. In 2011, they were 67,000. However, this data doesn't represent the actual crisis of the area. Indeed, unlike before the crisis, many of the actual companies are made up of one or at most a few workers, but since the crisis had begun on 2008, more than 9,000 historical large manufacturers shut, giving rise to a massive loss of workplaces. The decline process had of course a domino effect. Shrink age of habitats, demographic stasis, lower immigration inflow, and dramatic level of youth immigration and mobility. But also surplus of housing, collective utilities, infrastructures. But the deepest crisis is that of the settlement model, which is no longer supported by a demand. An issue that obviously is not just regarding a quantitative matter, but more crucially, a complex network of spatial relationships. While this retraction dynamic is in progress, the Brianza continues to be extensively built for speculative reasons, but also for the central government policy to support agonizing business economy and for the dominant culture inertia in terms of investment, especially by lending banks. In our analysis, such twofold phenomenon is not set in terms of an apriorystic controversy between space and the body that occupy it. Radar, the focus of our attention is placed on the overall imbalance between the transformation produced in space and the dissipation of energy used to produce them. Three forms of distortion can be therefore pointed out in the ongoing shape of construction of the territory. Firstly, there is a mismatch between the measure of what is built and the actual infrastructure development that supports it, both in terms of population and production. Secondly, a contraction emerges from ongoing territorial dynamics, which are moving in contrary direction and have opposite signs, since processes of addition are combined with phenomena of contraction in the utilization of existing resources. Finally, incremental autonomous and self-referred processes of transformation seems to have worn out a large part of the social overhead capital, for example in terms of landscape and infrastructures, and which defines the primary quality of the territory. The spread allowed the inhabitants of the metropolitan area to realize their implicit and individualistic project, assessing a diffused welfare. 
This had relied also on a very solid historical frame, which guaranteed a high and extensive quality to suburban and spread environments. In fact, the collective imagination sustained a living and working model, which aspired to locate out of town, but with the facilities typical of a city at hand, to be part of a homogeneous social dimension by cultivating the individualism, to open its own small factory or activity but sharing the lot with home, to lean on low traffic road network but one step away from big interchange nodes. Today, this urbanized landscape achieved in 30 years is deeply questioned by an opposite dynamic, resulting bloked, exhausted and extremely expensive in the maintenance of the logics that generated it. The territorial competition as paradigm of the relation between cities forced by globalization and a knowledge in the European project highlighted the limitation of many Italian territorialization models of the economical and social processes. The dynamic of incremental development of Milan's metropolitan area and Brianza was first of all the outcome of a policy which counted on the individual's initiative to implement a general urban development without much public investment. At the same time, it has been a convenient permissive condition to take advantage of and in which proliferated personal and local interests in this lack of shared strategies, new settlements were built both as a expansion of already existing urbanized areas and from within the rural and densely parcelled lands. The single families with her human resource and capitals were the main maker of the contemporary metropolitan region. But over the time, this mechanism has refined further and it has been taken over by a network of specialized players claiming their voices in formulating the urbanization agenda and that today ended up forcing the demand and supply game, thus deeply impacting a territory in the middle of a structural crisis. This has also affected the dominant urban forms. If at the beginning of this self-construction process the prevalence was low density made of single objects and lots, whatever they were houses or factories, giving rise to a very thin sprawl, in recent times the urbanized spread landscape has changed. Today it is in fact built through the diffusion of low density islands. These individual object units that colonize the territory increase the difficulties of managing the abandoned spaces. Assuming the economic and population reception increase at the basis of the reasoning, if new spaces were to be occupied, others would be left, with the aggravation that the left space would be used and deteriorated, thus more difficult to recycle. Furthermore, if the bird islands will not be occupied, the efforts on the land will be also greater. The containment of urbanized land and the rethinking of fixed capital does not only correspond to a logic of defense of a more natural soil, but it is a condition for the redevelopment and recapitalization of already urbanized areas. Since, without an, any policy of containment in the next years, the conditions of problematic coexistence between underused punctual and unit development are also to be expected. Maintenance. The hypothesis presented in this paper is that new paradigms for the common good should be now taken into consideration and that maintenance is to be firmly considered as priority horizon for this kind of spread and already largely urbanized territories. Maintenance means finalizing human activities to an economic and sustainable use of existing resources while planning and managing the larger anthropogenic and natural systems that surround them. In the Italian planning context in particular, a maintenance strategy could allow a positive redefinition of compensatory criteria. For example, the public standard 
as a regulatory instrument in planning, intended as a set of actions taken by individual developers in favor of the common good. The goal may thus be linking the building practice to win a planning permission to more widely strategic development scenarios for the territory, shifting from local benefits concept to the ones of whole urban systems. Now, fitting within the actual conditions of territory, compensatory actions could take the form of an individual participation to the maintenance or enhancement of existing structures and spaces rather than being conceived as an addiction of extra spaces and structures to be destined to public services as it currently is. Maintenance should be therefore conceived as a project for the urban territory and a concrete action. It should refer to a public project of the city, which includes a set of positive individual actions, but it needs to be reformulated. Following the definition of a larger scenario of transformation, the identification and realization of concrete goals could finally expand the responsibility of individual transformation in opposition to the current monetization of compensatory duties and public rights, which merely benefits public administration rather than communities. Consequently, strategies for the discouragement of soil consumption should be made integral to a broader policy of territorial renewal. In this way, the intervention of urban development should be connected to policy promoting a redesign of the public, semi-public or private open spaces that are close to the development itself in a genuine renewal of the existing policy. This should be defined as a form of intervention that departs from the autonomy of a single parcel and engages not only the private lot, but also the surrounding streets and the small and locked open spaces in the urban fabric, as well the peri-urban agricultural areas which are intrinsically connected to them. The design of maintenance. Within this interpretative framework, the design project can be intended as a powerful cognitive tool able to formulate at different scales spatial strategies and articulations of space that could serve as additional and alternative models for urban transformation. On the one hand, the design focuses on ongoing transformations and relations among different parts of the territory. Taken as a whole, the complex areas of forthcoming transformation of the topical role both in structure in the urban environment they belong to and in their collective potential as a system of areas spread throughout the territory. This is relevant especially in regard to the overall redefinition of forms and relationship within intermediate scales. This means that the project should include dimension considering the territory relationship among its local parts that are reference scales often excluded from the territorial planning as as a form of the projects of single fragments. For instance, the project could enhance the residual spaces of an environmental system which are now landlocked and densify the urbanized borders. On the other hand, the project should try to grasp the meaning of the emergent dynamics expressing an opposite sign to the additive processes that are prevalent today, trying to establish new ways in which the dynamics of transformation of certain urban fabrics may take place. For instance, the project should set rules to requalify and concentrate changes within the already densely built urban fabrics rather than create dispersed expansions. Two different tactics could be implemented. 
and from them it would be possible to derive a series of design actions and attitudes to an overall strategy. The structuring of processes of splitting through punctual densification of existing fabrics instead of the consolidation of services or empty spaces in those places that should be areas of expansion. The shift of planned volumes from unbuilt areas whose value is recognizable in their emptiness to areas that prove to be more suitable and strategic for densification. The maintenance design under the conditions identified by this research means therefore to concretely investigate and deal with issues of spatial and social justice and the ways in which the social opportunities might be more equally distributed, but also begin to address the ongoing environmental crisis and the ways in which urban planning might provide an ecological agenda.